voltage on it. Well, you think about it, six miles going out one direction is quite a long ways to get. Okay? And I said, is your fence dead in? He said, yes. I said, is there any way you could loop that fence and come back around and make one continuous loop out of it? Well, maybe. He said, what good would that do? He said, well, if you make that a continuous loop, wire-wise, you only have one wire. But to this fence charger, you now have a two-wire fence. Because you now have power flowing out two directions. That's like using two wires. So you have power going two directions to any certain point. So you've increased your conductivity tremendously just by the way you change your design and fence. So I'm not going to get too in-depth about it, but those are things to keep in mind as we migrate into these larger energizers. It does make a difference how good your fence is. Okay? So we covered the fence, we covered the ground system. I guess kind of what we're down to right now is the energizer line. A um, little bit about what StayFix does. We are a New Zealand company. We're owned by the parent company, TrueTest, which we're kind of known for our scales. We've been in that business a long time. Uh, I've had the privilege, I think about, what, Cliff, six or seven years now, I've been with TrueTest. I was actually dark-haired when I started. <laughs> I will not take the credit for you. But <laughs> uh, and it's been interesting to see the changes just in six years and what we've done. Our Energizer line has changed tremendously. Uh, I, had to, I worked for another company for a long time. They're, I won't say what their name is. Their colors were orange. Uh, probably worked for them longer than anybody they have now. Uh, learned a lot there. They had good products, but I watched the decline in that. When I came over to True Test, I was a little bit ashamed of myself because I did not really realize what my competition was. <coughs> and I remember the first time I got a 36 remote control energizer. Now I have a place probably about 120 miles west of here, run a few cattle, uh, have a work in progress on my fence. I can show you what not to do, what kind of works, and what really works good on my place. Uh, but I, 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 I'm kind of one of the kind of people that I have to try everything. If, if I haven't tried it and I don't know it, I can't really sell it. So the first thing I did was I took this 36 Joule remote control fence charger. Cliff, you're not listening to this. <clears throat> Had it sent to my house, plugged it in and hooked it up. And then lights went off, everything was hot and everything was working great. And I started pulling with it. And some things were blowing my mind. I could short that fence out. I, I've got a three quarters of a mile offset wire that runs along a barbed wire fence. I could go back and short that fence out and still maintain five to six thousand volts in the rest of my system. And I go, well, this is not right. Because normally when you do that, you pretty well pull your whole system down. Okay? The second thing that surprised me was I could take that remote control and I could turn that fence on and off when I was below a thousand volts. And that never happened with the other company. I go, there is something to this. Well, I saw this name. You can't see it, but on that energizer it says Sickly Quay. And uh, I thought that was pretty much just hocus pocus. Sounded like BS to the boy from Southwest Missouri. So I start reading about it and studying up on it, and I find out there's something to it. And that's why these units work like they do. I'm going to explain it a little bit to you. We talk about these energizers, we talk about them with what we call output joules. When you look at one of our units, this unit's got a 12 on it. That means it's 12 output joules. The competition talks about stored joules. We'll give you stored joules also. They're always higher. Reality is output joules is what you got to work with. You got a tractor that puts out 300 horsepower coming out of the crankshaft, but by the time you get to the draw bar, you got 275 horse. What do you got to work with? You got 275 horsepower. So that's why we talk about output joules because that's what you got to work with. That's what you need to know. Now, how big an energizer do you need? That's a question about like, can I tell you how many ground rods are you going to need? I can give you some some guidelines. 
there is no real account. What works in Colorado is totally different than what works here. Because their vegetation load is not near as high, they don't have near the humidity, they don't have near the drain on a fence that we would have here. There's some broad guidelines we can suggest. I think Dave does a great job at this when he's working with, with the customers. Dave's kind of like me, when in doubt, pump up one notch. You can never have too much power, or not that I'm aware of. You know, I never hear a customer complain about too much power. I will hear customers complain about not enough power. So, uh, there's some rules of thumb. Can you really say one output of energy, will, one joule of output energy will do X number of miles or X number of acres? You can, but what works here won't work 300 miles from here. And if you think about it in this country, how many people are, say, from within a 100 mile radius of where we're at right now? Okay. And I know we got some people from Canada. I think we got a guy from Tennessee here. I was trying to kind of catch this morning where all people were from. In this country, we roll into March, it starts to green up. It's usually wet. We roll into April, it's grass is starting to grow. And all of a sudden, one morning in May, you wake up and you've got one wire cross fences all over your farm and you can't see them. But only where the cows have been recently. Can you see that why? The reason is, is this grass called fescue. And fescue will grow a stem about six to eight inches a day in proper climate. And all of a sudden you can't see your fence and it's covered up. And when that stuff's laying on your fence and it's wet because it's rain, it's like putting little ground rods all over your fence. It's a tremendous drain. That's when you're glad you bought that one size power up because it will still stay ahead of it a little bit. And it'll dry it up, and then all of a sudden you'll see a brown line going down your field. Now, Jim Garish, if he's listening to this, he's probably shaking his head because he's saying, Doug, can't you do any better job of grazing than that? <laughs> well, Jim, you're from Missouri, and you know how fast that fescue grows, but yeah, I don't do the best job. The reason is that my boss, Cliff Cobb, standing back here, keeps me on the road too that young But uh, that kind of keeps the paycheck coming in too. Anyways, power is important. Uh, too much power is not an issue. Most of our higher power units have a half power terminal. When I'm cabin in the vegetation, say about the first of March, a lot of times I'll flip my fence over to half power. I just don't want that full power. I don't need it out there. Those baby calves, when they're a day or two old, they're kind of goofy. They stumble into that wire. You know, I don't need it. Okay. Then it's that when the grass starts coming up, I'll put it back on full power. So uh, don't be afraid of too much power. I have the question sometimes, well, I got it around my yard. What happens if my kids get into it? And I used to answer that with a question. I kind of quit that. I used to answer, well, are your kids smarter than your cows? Because a cow will learn from one hit on a good fence not to get into it. I ran into a situation here about a year ago where I decided I think I'll quit asking that question from now on. But uh, anyways. A little bit about the power part of it. Now back to that cyclic wave. When we rate these units, we rate them by output joules. It takes three things to make an output joule. It takes voltage, it takes amperage, and then the duration of the pulse. Okay. On our units, two of those are constant. Whether it's a 63 joule output unit, or it's a one joule output unit, if I put, plug them in and put a voltmeter on them, they're going to read about the same voltage. As I put a load on them, that one joule is going to drop a whole lot quicker than the big one is. So our voltage is constant. Our pulse duration is constant. We use that cyclic wave technology, which is actually shorter than a regular low impedance unit. Okay, it's cleaner pulse. Talk just a little bit more about that in a minute. So what we change is we change our amperage. As we increase the output of our unit, we're increasing that amperage. So that, that's how we increase our power output. Now, that cyclic wave technology that I keep talking about, it took me a while to get my head around it. If you analyze a low impedance pulse curve, it travels, it, it's a real steep pulse and it's real clean, okay? The old wheat burners were actually a real high voltage pulse 
but they were they, they didn't peak and they went a long time and they came back down. When I was a kid growing up, I never thought I'd be in the electric fence business because we had electric fence. Our wire was rusty. Our